Hey, aloha kakahiaka, aloha, and good morning to you, Facebookers, and all your ohana. Thanks for joining us on Songs of Sovereignty this morning. I sure hope you're having a great Wednesday, and we got a lot of ground to cover in the next two hours. We're going to have a live report by Cookie on the coronavirus, a comprehensive report, bringing it all together in a little bundle, tied up with some tea leaf for you, so you know what you're facing with this coronavirus. Also, we have call-ins from um, Kamu and our Konohiki of Halelea Kauai, Kaimi Hermosura. They're going to be talking about the battle that's about to begin on the north shore of Kauai. And we also have new music with Kyle B. featuring Thrizzy Thriz and Uncle, Ray, Uncle Reggie Badon. So, hope you enjoy the show today. Share the link. Start your watch parties. Enjoy. We'll be back in a few minutes. Please enjoy Uncle Reggie. Oh, how I loved you here That whisper of the wind Gentle-hearted songbird on the wind Somehow you feel you softly Feel your heart in mine And the thoughts I have for only you, my home Sit upon the stone I trust to feel so close at times Tip to toe so gently I will stand Oh, them flowers mount the hours gentle on my mind And the calling of a yellow feather friend We are the children, we are the dawn of life. Together we are changing in endless life. We are the children, we are the dawn of life. Hours go on ending in endless life. Tumble turning, still I'm yearning to glide on whispering wing. Tip to toe so gently I can't stand. Oh, them flowers, mouthy hours, gentle on my mind. And the calling of a yellow feather friend. We are the dawn of life Together we are changing in endless life We are the children We are the dawn of life Our words go on ending in endless life Our words go on ending in an endless 
Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this virus that's spreading right now, the coronavirus. Um, just a few tips as a mama, a concerned mama for our beloved La Hui. Um, this coronavirus has several different strains, but the one that's spreading right now is actually the deadliest. They've closed off the China borders and found it in Germany and Japan. And I heard Thailand as well. There's a 14 day incubation period. so. Really, um, there's no telling where this virus will end up in the next few weeks. So they've um, cautioned and advised that people limit their travel, <clears throat> stay away from hugely populated areas, crowded areas, and um, <clears throat> and this virus really likes dry environments. Uh, so keep your mouth lubricated if it does get dry keep drinking water and that's just a good tip in general stay hydrated keep your immune system boosted uh, take things like vitamin D C your bees echinacea elderberry all kinds of good stuff do your homework I'm not an expert but this is just some advice um, it also likes uh, to plant itself in uh, people with immunodeficiencies like myself I have, an, I have three autoimmune diseases so that's why I'm taking this pretty serious and um, cakey as well so um, you know keep them keep your social circles small uh, your interactions a little bit more limited until you know March they say um, until further notice and also um, don't share drinks and food you know Kanaka we love to feed everybody eat from the same poi bowl all that kind of stuff like I said there's an incubation period it doesn't always show up in everyone so just be safe and malama malama yourself malama your loved ones and um yeah, ke aloha nui. I love you all and be safe and do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> 
because remember, I'm not a doctor, not an expert, just a mama that uh, loves her keiki and loves my lahui. Aloha mai, ahui ho. Aloha, everyone. Welcome back to our show. So I have a segment that I'm going to do on the coronavirus. And it's not, you know, like what Queen Miley talked about. We're all trying to be proactive here and look after each other, take care of our family, our kupuna. Those are that are at high at risk. And so I have a lot to go over. But first of all, you know, the, the media is not reporting... Um, all across the board. So first of all, I'm going to talk about Moku Kiawe. We have 62 cases total in the Hawaiian Islands that are self-contained, self-monitoring for on Moku Kiawe here. And when I reached out to ask them what is self-contained, self-monitoring, basically um, the, CDD, the CDC told me and the Board of Health, the Board of Department here, said that these four on Moko Kiave reign in age of 13 years old to 72, the four. That's all that they said, that there's four here, which I highly doubt there's probably more. So, and the self-monitoring, self-contained is um, four different families now. And um, these individuals are staying in their home, not interacting with anyone socially. They have to be at home for two to three weeks. Better more than less than the two weeks. Um, also, I wanted to share that there's alternatives like for me, it's, you know, we all don't like taking medications. And I reached out to Mother Tree, which is Abby Layden. And she is on Facebook. And we do have a flyer that we'll share with you. You can contact her or we'll post um, the site where you can go and find your alternatives out there. Um, let me pull it up. So... Right on. There we go. We're showing Abby's um, post. It's mo mo Mother Tree tree medicinals and she also sent me a whole bunch of stuff on your alternatives it's a little bit more pricey but worth it because this is, you only have one life right there's also a lot of stuff internationally and it's really scary and what we're trying to do is not scare you but be proactive be you know mindful be maka'ala because we know that we knew that this was coming November from before November you know when it leaked out that video leaked out of that doctor who passed away who shared his video and so here on Mokulukeiawe and all throughout our islands just be mindful and if you're flying it's better to wear a mask and I actually have um there's here's the mask I'm gonna take it out um there's all kinds of masks. If you walk into a hospital facility, a physician, they'll give it to you. These are the ones that we purchase. And there's a breathing apparatus. You shape it to your nose. And then this is another mask. There's all kinds of masks out there. And what I was told by the CDC and the Board of Health is the main part is there's a, there's a wire on the mask part. Shape it to your nose because... The coronavirus is airborne, and once you cough, you cough upward or downward, it still lingers in the air, and it can land anywhere on you. And if there's any open, like your mouth, your eyes, any open pores of your, you know, extremities, so wear a mask. When you're out in public, wear a mask, because we actually don't know. I mean, there's four on this island, 62 total on the island chain. So just be careful. Um, and if you have any other questions or if you have any input, send it to us. I would love to have all your input. Um, yeah, the symptoms. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so your symptoms are, let me bring that up. So these are the signs and symptoms. Sorry, I have to read it. Uh, avoid spreading practice following wash your hands with soap and water at least 20 seconds or even more avoid contact with people 
If you're coughing, sneezing, don't cough in your hand. Cough in your in the bend of your elbow. Your hands touch everything. This is the most dirtiest part of your body because we touched everything with our hands. Um, fever, chills. Uh, it's like having the flu, but worse. And you just feel nauseous. There's throw up. You you just uh, you you have diarrhea. There's there's all across the board. It's like flu, but worse. So really watch yourselves. Be mindful of those that you're around. And if you're interacting, like Queen Miley said, you know, in her initial post, um, if you're, because we, we're always kissing each other. We honey each other. You know, we're sharing ha. Don't, there's no need to share ha. Just wave. Aloha. You know, just be really careful because this coronavirus is a pandemic. And when you look up the definition for pandemic, it's huge. I even spoke to Alexa yesterday and she said there's over 70,000 people, close to 80,000 people who have coronavirus throughout the world. That's scary. You know, this is like a scare tactic that we're pulling back and we want you to be proactive. We want you to be mindful. We want you to be maka'ala with this. So again, if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions, send it in to us here at Songs of Sovereignty because this is really, really scary. It's um, personally depopulation. We don't want that. We want to thrive. We want everyone to be okay. So be watch out. Watch out for our babies, our kupunas. Those are higher receptive. Like for me, example, I have epilepsy. So I really have to watch. And everybody with autoimmune deficiencies, syndromes going around there, having not a good uh, immune system. And so anyhow, we send it in. And if you have any questions too whatsoever, send it in. All right. Thank you so much. Next is get the flock off our mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> to see a better way work together for a more collective say not go half a call it go all the way we living in a blessed era of max holloway it is what it is us champs grind every day steady banging i know oh hawaii nay jedi guardians of the galaxy non-fiction and fallacy our home not a theme park museum or gallery off the grid down in the valley living sustainably and happily what we need we get plenty nobody crank it go easy spank it with your hanky panky ho ante making big noise and we got them listening chanting singing dancing and we whispering in a battle never ending mount a defending trending this rebellion beginning to the happy ending get the flock off our mountain you get the flock off our mountain Cause we will never run Cause we love More than we scare your guns Get the fuck off our mountain You get the fuck off our mountain Cause we will never run Cause we love More than we scare your guns In this circle of assassins We use words as weapons Tearing tyranny apart While we teaching lessons Chanting down this Babylon system On pressing Lighting up the darkness Cleaning messes and spreading blessings ready willing and restless key out your frontliners in the trenches ready to wreck shit dug in deep on heavy gangster beat bring the heat never back down surrender or retreat small victories slight adjustments press repeat our stories we now speak we no need sneak
me. Nature over concrete is how we snatch in victory from your jaws of defeat. Get the fuck off our mountain. You get the fuck off our mountain. Cause we will never run. Cause we love more than we scare you guns. You like, you like, I'm on now, I care. War on no, you can move. All right, here it goes.
Kamuela Hepa, you made me so homesick right now. That's my Hanai son, who has a really great mom, Donna Ho'opi'i. Um, Kamuela Hepa, and he is part of our, actually, one of our biggest forces on Kauai Island um, in our standing army that we have. And in a few minutes, he has put together a little, tiny little report for us. And as we're waiting for Kaimi to join us via Zoom, Kaimi, you better wake up and get on the, the Zoom link, okay? Because we really need to know what's happening in Halele Akua'i. Um, we're going to have a couple more songs here. and But first, Chris, you know the photo of my cousin, Nancy Mae Chandler? You know which one I'm talking about? Okay. It's on the 930 where it says Zoom In, and I said photo of Facebook post by Nancy May, and it's on your messenger. If we could post that up during the next music, because the thing about Nancy May is she's very humble, but you don't want to mess with her. And on this day, three women blocked the traffic, another woman dealt with the cops, and we were called a human chain. So watch for that photo of Nancy May. Um, you'll find it. I'll send it to you, Chris. And enjoy the music till we hook up with Kaimi. Thanks for tuning in. First things first is the issue of our aina, of our poe and our lahui. Why is it so hard for a Hawaiian to be here in Hawaii? Why is it hard for a Hawaiian to be Hawaiian, eat from his lands, drink from his waters? Why does the Hawaiian have to rest the Hawaiian? And if the Hawaiians aren't here in Hawaii, where will we put our Hawaiians? Where will we be Hawaiian? Conscious music, call this one brains. All of them using their most powerful weapon, the brain, the heart. But it's not the same, it's not the simple as before. It's not our bodies, but our brains. They use them for their war, confused and in pain. We don't know what we're fighting for. So they watch us kill each other as we pile up on the floor. So what's the future to the youth of today? Cause I said I'm looking for the truth, but I see them look to the books and pray. For the YouTubes and Facebooks, them can't look away. For a second, would you realize that things in your mouth every time that you take a breath in? Well, it's hard when your brain washed your senses, got you guessing. If you listen to me truly speak, you realize what I'm stressing. I say it's not the same, it's not the simple as before. Not the bodies, but our brains that they use in for their war. Confused and in pain, we don't know what we're fighting for. So they watch us kill each other and we pile up on the floor. One designed to get you moving and grooving. Get them bodies to the floor. Drum and bass. This is more than a hesitation. This is just lazy. This is more than a generation. This is history. But don't think the criticization let your roots run deep. I'll adapt into the ways that it ain't just call me crazy. But I think this is more than a vacation. This rule cut E. That's a means to replace the nation that's filling the two greed. A thousand years since we came here. Century. We've been fighting to be free, but today we're fighting just to be here. It's not the same, it's not this simple as before. Not the bodies, but our brains that they use it for their war. Confused and in pain, we don't know what we're fighting for. So they watch us kill each other as we play the front and floor. Get up, get up, get up, get out of the box. They're trying to stop us from talking. But I'm the cops and I'm out in tops and the bridges in the sea here. Get up, get up, get out of the box. They're trying to stop us from talking. I'm the cops and I'm out in tops and the bridges in the sea not 200 years since that dumb mouse from Tea Party. Now they're coming over here with the sicknesses. Them are coming over here and them are coughing, coughing. Stopping us in the coffins, coffins. Telling us for the coughing, coughing. Sorry, that's not me. So get them, get them, get off me, off me. It's not the same, it's not the simple as before. Now the bodies are our brains. They use them for their war. Confused and in pain. We don't know what we're fighting for. So they watch us kill each other as we pile up on the floor. Get up, get up, get 
out of the box, they try to stop us from talking about all the cops and the multi tops and the fishes in the sea. Yeah. Get up, get up, get out of the box, they try to stop us from talking about all the cops and the multi tops and the fishes in the sea. Yeah. Not 300 years in the drum bar, can take party. Then they're coming over here with sickness, and they're coming over here, they're coughing, coughing, stopping us in the coughing, coughing, telling us how to coffee, coffee. Sorry, that's not me, so get up, get up, get off me, off me. It's just the same, it's not the simple as before. Now the bodies of our brains that they're using for their war, confused and in pain, we don't know what we're fighting for. So they watch us kill each other as we pile up on the floor. Kupono ea, ea imuwa uo mau Keio kai aina Kupono ea, ea imuwa uo mau Keio kai aina Kupono ea, ea wali panja Skowa deza mana tava kings and queens Urvizido da islands and saw everything How would they feel about the changes of our land? Why could you just imagine if they were around? And it's our concrete jungle and highways on sacred ground. How would they feel about the disrespect of ancient lands? Wanna now, 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 tears will come from each other's eyes and they will stop to realize that's how will the people are in great, great danger now. Whoa, 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 tell me what would they say? How would they feel? Will the smiles be content for the cry for the pains that they have seen? Now cry for our gods, cry for our people, cry for our lands that was taken away, yeah, yeah. And then yet you find her vote in name. Ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah. Uo mau keio kai ana kikupono ea ea imuwa uo mau keio kai ana kikupono ea ea imuwa uo mau keio kai ana kikupono ea ea wanna now now all of the fighting in Kamehameha done to conquer all the islands now this kind of news how How would they feel about the changes of our land? Why could you just see him imagine if he came back and I saw traffic lights and the railroad tracks? How would he feel about the disrespect of ancient lands? Wanna now, 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 tears will come from each other's eyes and they would stop to realize that how will the people are in great, great danger now? Whoa, 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 tell me what would they say? How would he feel? Would his smiles be content for the cry for the pain that he has seen? Now cry for our gods, cry for our people, cry for our lands that was taken away, yeah, yeah. And then yet you find hope in it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
It's only in righteousness, only in righteousness, only in righteousness.
<laughs> I'm sorry, Kapua. I just heard your chickens. <laughs> We've got Kapua. Um, she's standing by to come on uh, Zoom with us to talk about her Olelo class that she started to empower women in Waimanalo. But before we go to her, I just wanted to say a big mahalo to all of you for joining us today. I, I lost my train of thought because I was like... So I'm not on Kauai anymore. <laughs> Why is there chickens? <laughs> There's an echo. You gotta turn it down too. I think, yeah. Oh yeah, and I had the speaker on over here. So, anyway, as you can tell, we're just a bunch of chicks trying to do a live show. Around here, we're just a bunch of chicks trying to do a live show around here. We're just a bunch of chicks trying to do a live show around here. And then the rooster crowed, and I got all speechless. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, my Kauai boys is trying to figure out the Zoom link. So, hey, Kaimi, if you don't figure it out later on, just call. I'm going to hold the phone right here by the microphone and then they can, you can talk. OK, so we got a We got a solution for that. But in the meantime, I have Sister Kapua Madaris and Sister Sandy Pa fight, fight, fight for Portugal because yeah. <laughs> yesterday was Fat Tuesday. And then they had to send me pictures of malasadas when I can't go get no malasadas at night around here because I live in the boonies now in Hamakua. So thanks, our chicks. I couldn't sleep. I had no fat Tuesday. I had to uh, comfort myself with some arare. Yeah, the other Portuguese of the Asians, the Japanese. Anyway, Auntie Kapua is online with us, and so is Auntie Sandy. And um, a few weeks ago, maybe six, eight weeks, I'm not sure how long you've been doing this, Kapua, but she decided she wanted to empower her community and women in her community by teaching them Olelo Hawaii. And if you've ever studied Olelo Hawaii, you know what an empowering experience just learning your language is. And first start, yeah, you're shocked at how much you already know. We've been listening to it our whole lives. We've been saying words our whole lives. So if you've never tried to olelo, if you've never studied Hawaiian language, I highly encourage it because it's really fun. And you know what the most fun about our language is? The kauna. We have really naughty kind kauna sometimes, actually most of the time. But it's a really fun language. And from someone who speaks a few different languages... None of them fun like Hawaiian. I highly recommend Olelo Hawaii. So let's talk to Auntie Kapua right now. How's it, girl? How are you doing? I'm awesome this morning. I'm so excited to join the show this morning. All right. So um, you so, decided okay. so um, you I, decided that you were going to just uh, go ahead and start your own Olelo Hawaii class. And yeah. how, what you just woke it up one morning and you was like, I just got to do something. How did that happen? <laughs> did you have malasadas um, first? I always wanted. <laughs> oh, my God. They're very inspiring. <laughs> A good malasada. <laughs> malasadas is always that inspiring, is of course. Yeah. <laughs> right? And then hanging with Sister Sandy is always inspiring. Oh yeah, my yeah. gosh. So, so you woke yeah, up one day, one day and you're well, like, I'm going to you know, do my this. Dream always was. <laughs> that, that's the Hawaiian word of today, malasada. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> it, all, it always was my dream, you know, to be able to uh, spread Hawaiian language throughout Hawaii. And um, just. I just was, you know, thinking about how could I, what is one thing that I could do that would benefit myself as well as benefit everyone around me. And so it came to me that why I could just start a class right here in my community. Um, at the time, there wasn't any, so. Um, but since then, there's a lot of classes now that, you know, the state offers free classes and stuff. So that's awesome. It's really awesome that we just keep spreading the uh, Olelo Hawaii because it gives us um, so much uh, that we can hold on to and it gives us a, a sense of pride and self-esteem and just especially for our young people you know Sandy and I and um, a bunch of us and even my sexy Paul we've been going all over the place um, 
with this movement and everywhere we go there's so many young people and they're so smart and they're so involved and they're so in touch with their culture their language and it's such a big surprise for us as Mapua and Kupuna to see that happening around in Hawaii. Nay, you didn't see that before in our day. It's so exciting. So that was my that was my um, inspiration behind starting a small little Hawaiian class, Hawaiian language class here in Waimanalo, which is our hometown. That's where I grew up. Um, and so, and even with the Punana Niho um, incident, where we all had to come and sit down at Kupuna to protect our Kupuna Iwi. Um, just those kind of things just keep happening in a short period, a short time period. And it just inspired me to just start it already. Don't wait till you have the resources. Don't wait to, to you know, you have a you have a following. Don't wait. Just put out a message. Ask who's interested and just start it. So... Um, so when do you meet? What time? How many oh students God. do you have? So, um, yes, we meet every Saturday morning and we get together at Sister Lulu's house. Tell my, my dog is doing that. That's all right. So we love dogs more than people. <laughs> <laughs> And then, Charlie, come here. It's okay, T. So we're, um, we get together every Saturday morning, and we meet at Lulu's house, and we have so much fun, just so much, um, you know, everyone there wants to be able to speak Hawaiian someday, and I promise them that within a year, we're all going to be speaking. You know, for me, I never... Uh, my grandmother could speak Hawaiian, though she never did, but I could ask her questions. It was a resource. She died when I was very young, though. My mom's generation wasn't able to, um, and my grandma's generation stopped speaking because they were punished for speaking in school. Um, and then when it came to my daughter's generation, I put her in the Honanaleo program, and, and then I um, got through that program, I got involved with learning to hear the language every day and then before you know it I could speak and I was going to classes at night so that that just inspired me to keep the olelo going and I try to use it you know as much as I can but I really wanted to sit down with my sisters and teach them how to speak Hawaiian and then just from there keep spreading it and spreading it um, and so we do, we meet at Lulu's house, and she's so awesome. She lets us come and just take over our hale, and her husband gets involved sometimes, and you get to see my clip. Um, you know, he's so fun too, but he has a big heart, um, and he lets us come there every week and just sit. So we get together Saturday morning at 10 a.m., 9 a.m., <laughs> or 10 a.m., and we also started a Facebook live group so that we could put our, our Facebook group for our class and a chat. So that way we're always in tune with them and I can post lessons and then I post the live. We record all lessons live and then post it in a group for everyone. So it's really, I make it convenient for anyone, everyone. We have a lot of ladies who never get to attend, but they can watch it. They can watch it live or watch replays. So um, it's just awesome. <laughs> well, while I'm while I'm looking at you ladies on the screen, I'm thinking I have to somehow, I don't know, maybe we need a calendar of beautiful kupuna wahine that are empowering women or something like that. Because I was just looking at the two of you. You're so beautiful. Your light is shining. And uh, it's really amazing what you're doing, Kapua. Thank you so much because... I know firsthand how empowering it was for me the first time I took my Olelo Hawaii class and I started realizing how much I know. And then I started realizing, you know, that I could maybe say some sentences with my girlfriends and we could talk funny kind about the cute boy down the road or whatever and they wouldn't know what we're understanding. And that was a long time ago. 
And you know, so it's very empowering. And especially the kauna in our language is so empowering. So I'm going to put you on the spot right now because I know we're said we're starting next week. But do you have a Hawaiian word of the day for us today, please? Yes. Um, I'm going to use the word. Um, <laughs> I'm going to use the if you don't mind, I'm going to use two words, but these two are so close to my heart. One is um, aloha, always. Aloha is so all-encompassing. It not only means love, it not only means hello, it not only means goodbye. It's so deep inside of us, um, the aloha that you can feel in Hawaii. When mostly everyone you meet, you can feel that it exudes from us because it's inside of our DNA. It's who we are. Mm-hmm. We do that. When you go traveling, you don't feel that anywhere else. But onipa'a is my next word. Yeah, onipa'a. that's my favorite. My favorite, word. All my favorite yeah. word. my favorite Yeah, onipa'a. My favorite. It, it, it lets us know that though we face hard times, though we're going through so many, so many issues comes and goes from our life, we still need to dig our feet in, stay strong, and keep on looking forward and keep moving forward. So mm-hmm. only for a steadfast, just like the, um, just like the Ali tree that grows on the edge of the cliff. Mm-hmm. It doesn't just say, oh my gosh, the wind is too hard, I'm going to rip out my root and fall out or get off of this mountain. It doesn't. It just stays there. It weathers the conditions and it keeps growing beautifully in the all conditions. That word on fire is so important for each and every one of us. And I'm so excited that my Mo'opuna is going to get to watch this and hear these things that's going to be coming every week. I'm so excited about all of this and what you do for us, Ka'ilan. Yeah. All of your strength and beauty as a woman and, and Cookie and Teresa and everyone and even all the Anakalas. They're so happy that we get to watch this show. Um, thank you so much. It's empowering for all um, of us, Nakamaoli. <laughs> Mahalo, Mahalo, Kapua. <laughs> Mahalo. And I'm looking forward to next week's word of the day. And um, if you're just tuning in with us, we've been talking story with Kapua Madaris and Sandy Pa. And we're going to introduce a new segment next week, the Hawaiian Word of the Day. And it's going to be coming live from Kapua Madaris's Olelo class in Waimanalo with all her wahines. So I don't know. I'm losing control here. I don't know what's going on. There's some fun things happening around me uh, in the studio because we got all this technology kapua. It's like, yeah, but thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. I'm going to call you up after. And you know what? Don't you post know. pictures of Manapua. I mean, not Manapua, oh, Malasadas or Manapua. Oh, Manapua. Oh, my God. No, no right. posting <laughs> pictures of food at night because right. there's nowhere around here. I know you guys can go <laughs> get in your car and just go down the road. and. Yeah, I know you I know you guys can get in your car and just go get you and Malasada. We don't have that. I so, know. you know. Well, we do, but they close early. They close like around dark. Yeah. <laughs> so don't do that anymore. Yeah. Love you, girls. Love you, love you, love you. Love Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. I'll call you up after. Oh. Okay, then. Yeah, we've been talking story with Sandy Pa and Kapua Madaris. Hi, girls. And um, unfortunately, I think because Kaimi is in Wainiha, we're having a hard time hooking up with him. But we have this little report that Kamu sent in. So we're going to play that for you. And then we're going to move on to other business. And hopefully um, next week we can work with getting Kaimi to a spot where there's reception. And this is a hard thing on Kauai. And for all of us, all in all of our islands, it's like... That's one of the things we have going against us when things are going on. Most time, we no more reception to even let anyone know. So um, we'll continue to try to hook you up with Kaimi. In the meantime, here's Kamu with his little video talking about Kauai's scandalous um, things going on. Lori Valor and some DEA agents getting busted and kind of juicy stuff. So let's take a watch, a listen. 
Dun, dun, dun. Dun, Good morning, dun, dun. ladies and gentlemen, here reporting in from the Garden Island of Kauai. The news today says this lady is still in jail. So she's still in jail, and her husband, which is a Mormon guy, this gentleman right here, his accomplice friend is Louis Saltron, the gentleman that approached me and my cousin, uh, telling us we should take the deal, the bribery deal from um, Chad Waters and Tyler Greens at the time when we had our issue of cocoa bombs and he was saying that they are very rich men and uh, they are very powerful men so basically it was like threats but it says right here Louis Sautron accomplice for this dude right here um, so basically we already know what had happened on, back in uh, the mainland what happened was that this lady she killed her ex-husband and her son and it's a guaranteed strong possibility of a case of human sex trafficking that she gave her daughter up for um so basically coming in from the garden island of kawaii this is the newest headline right here <coughs> and if they are found guilty of charge his accomplice louis motion will be arrested as an accomplice of this murder and propaganda of what's going on here on the garden island of kawaii now we're gonna switch the page here and we're gonna go to right over here which it says the DEA agent this is an agent of the DEA accused accomplice. Uh, he's accomplice of the conspiracy with the cartel drug cartels to Hawaii so basically we all know that the drug cartel has been smuggling in black tar heroin meth and cocaine into the islands of Hawaii and if the cocoa palms were to be up and to be built it would be a perfect place for the Mormon church to get rid of all the dirty money stay tuned for Kauai's Garden Island Report dun, dun, dun. Kauai is known for its natural beauty and laid-back attitude. Well, Podunk Island no more. Kauai now boasts all the amenities of home. Oh, and did we say loads and loads of parking? Unfortunately, the plentiful space for cars in the lot is made up for by jams on the road. Yes, with progress comes certain inconveniences, and Little Kauai is no exception. In fact, studies show that, on average, 25% of every vacationer's time is stuck here, on this little stretch of road in Kapa'a. Here's a little Hawaiian lesson for you. Kapa'a in Hawaiian means all jammed up. At the heart of all this gridlock, be sure to visit an archaeological wonder, a sacred Hawaiian burial ground, if you can find it, that is, beneath the breathtaking Waipoli Beach Resort and Spa, conveniently located across the street from this shopping mall. What a view! No wonder condos here are in the one and two million dollar range. Just an hour down the road, about half a mile, all you see now is a grove of geriatric cocoa palms. Soon they'll be gone, replaced by 550 more gorgeous units. So comfortable, you'll never have reason to leave. We're going that extra mile so you can't. This is ridiculous. And uh, it's, I'm gonna miss my flight. I had no idea I'd be waiting an hour in traffic like this. Just because traffic is stopped on Kauai doesn't mean progress has to.
estate market? Not here. Take Kealia for example. Today, 2,000 pristine acres. Tomorrow, a carpet of gentlemen's estates spanning mountain to sea. This might be seen by some as a burden on infrastructure. Beaches are already often unsafe for swimming. A growing population will make matters much worse. No problem! When you've got lemons, make lemonade! Kauai is now perfectly positioned to become the world's leading wellness destination for fecal therapy. In Kauai, there are more than just license plates to remind you of aloha. The friendly natives, for example. Get off our land. Go home. This is our aina. We know how to govern ourselves for 3,000 years. We know how to feed ourselves from our low is. Get off our land. On top of that ridge over there, they're gonna cut all that ridge down and put million dollar homes. That is already passed by the county planning department by Jeff Lidner, who bought the dairy and bought all of our next to Hawaiian homes and all of this. He bought all up there with Mike Strong and they're gonna make all these million dollar homes on the ridge there. That's the raping of Aina. Come to Kauai. Discover overdevelopment. Discover noxious fumes. Discover traffic jams. Discover our aloha spirit. Don't forget to discover fecal therapy. Kauai, Hawaii's island of discovery. Yes, discover Kauai. Um, yes, I recently posted uh, on my story a um, picture of a post by Justin Collar, our prosecuting attorney, who we're going to talk about later on in the show because he's got some big cases in front of him. Anyway, um, he was posting, complaining about the traffic. And of course, I told him, hey, how about you do something about the traffic? You're in a position of power. But what's really fun is like, they keep packing more people in. They don't even realize that if you keep bringing cars over, you're going to sit in traffic and you're going to be miserable. This video, Discover Kauai, was made, I want to say, eight years ago. So anyway, um, we've been trying to link up with our Konohiki of Halelea Kauai via Zoom. And somebody's messing it up because it says temporarily unavailable. So we have Kaimi on the phone. And Kaimi, I'm going to put the phone by the uh, microphone so we can talk story about what's happening on the island of Kauai right now. Because again, right? <laughs> Here we go again. All right. So go ahead. Okay. Aloha, everyone. Aloha, Antikayo. Aloha to you. Mahalo for... Uh doing what we do today and yes we're here on Kauai and just letting everyone know that yeah we do have problems here with the corruption of the county and the fake state of Kauai mm -hmm. as we all know uh, you know they just like to go about doing their process and, and projects without following the procedures and compliance and most of our consultations with the, the, Kanak the Kanaka Ohanas and the Hawaii Nationals that live in the area so today we have a big uh, town meeting uh, in Hanalei at the old Hanalei courthouse that starts at 5.30. And the mayor is supposed to be there and all of these uh, uh, <coughs> so sorry for the mayor that uh, work for him uh, that, you know, is going to be there. And then, uh, but pretty much he's talking about and they're presenting this uh, idea and they're not really asking for testimonies on it that they're going to be... They have a plan that they use these uh, federal funding money that came in after the flood to uh, build this emergency shelter right on Kipuhi Beach. 
and that's right in Wainiha, and and it's one is a it's a hazardous area. It's a tsunami and flood zone, and it's a place where our families are at rest in the burials in the grounds over there, and we are pretty furious because they're just going about it and they're saying that we have no say in it and we cannot make any testimonies tonight so the ohana council we have our ohana council is going to be there tonight we're going to be taking uh, tes uh, testimonies from ohana members and community members and having surveys and we're going to be set up outside so if you guys are out there tonight and you guys see there see us over there please uh, come and take the surveys for our ohana council and and so we can gather information of uh, the county acting this way and so we can, uh, you know, get them on other ends of the string. So, yeah, any thoughts or opinions or views you want to share with, about that, Antikayu? Well, I'm um, wanting to put up this photo from Auntie Nancy May about the mm -hmm. town meeting, and we'll, we'll keep mentioning where it's going to be held and what time. So it's going to be at the courthouse, Old Hanalei Courthouse, Wednesday, 5.30 p.m., February 26th. That's this evening. And it's just like, I think if anyone can be there, you should really try to be there because it's been going on for a long time and it's more of the same corruption and BS and it's a violation of international, federal, and state laws. It's just, again, complete lawlessness. And because... Uh, North Kauai is so, um, you know, it's kind of cut off. Well, look, we couldn't even connect via Zoom today, yeah? So no one's really watching what goes on on that side of the island. So even if you're on the west side today, it would be worth making the trip to the old Hanalei Courthouse this evening, 5.30 p.m., to go and be a witness to the lawlessness of the state, the county, et cetera, the same old, same old stuff that they always do that we've been participating in for a very long time. And mostly it doesn't work for us. It doesn't help us. Um, but we keep showing up. So I just want to challenge, you know, all Kauai. I see all your posts, you know. I get plenty of friends on Facebook. And I see what you're saying. So um, if you really, truly care, it's you know, it's not like we're on Big Island over there. Now that I live over here, Kaimi, I realize about distance, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's not like it's a um, real hardcore out-of-the-way drive, except through Kapa Town. oops. Um, but you know what I'm saying? Show up, because once again, this is bonehead shit. And that's all I can say, Derek Kawakami. This is bonehead shit. So You know, we've been, uh, we've been trying to communicate you know on a you know on a, on a good manner and level with them and you know although they um call the police on us when we have a memorandum of understandings and agreements with them to be uh rehabilitated and reusing the old Hanalei canoe club uh -huh. so like several a couple months ago we had our kids program and uh you know, one of the representatives of the council county, uh, Felicia Cowden, she's actually was, you know, affiliated with us and going to all our meetings. And Bye, Felicia. Yes, yeah, so we had all this little, we had all our meetings in the... Uh, I told the, you about her long time ago. Inside the canoe club and, uh, you know, all of a sudden she just posts this thing on Facebook saying that we are not to come there and the police is going to be involved and everything and they shut down our kids program. So, that, you know, that kind of really hit the community in a hard place because the Native Hawaiians out here, especially after, oh, well, not Native Hawaiians, sorry, take that back, scratch. The Kanaka families out here it's and okay, the Hawaii hey. nationals out here, uh, you know, like, we live a certain lifestyle and there's, you know, we kind of live in poverty and we try our best to clean up our place, our act, and, you know, with the corruption, with the county and government, it's like, doesn't really help. And on top of that, like, we're trying our best and then, you know, we have them, we try to go to other meetings and be affiliated with them and take, they still over there watching them, taking their pictures and, you know, doing their chalala charades. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, we're still suffering. Yes. And because, and that because of how their actions were and how they make uh, about, you know, 
towards our program. Like, shame on them, the county of Koi. Mm-hmm. For the king, you know what I mean? Like, and we're trying to, re- we're doing something good. We're not out there, you know, promoting, you know, uh, addictive, you know, ness or any kind of stuff like that. We're out there trying to preserve this place for our Kiki and, and, and our families because there's no place to go after they attack the land with all these federal monies and how they rebuild everything without any proper consultation processes. But because, you know, we are the Aina, we come from the land, like, we are not, we're steadfast, we're not going to give up. And, you know, the, the, it's just totally wrong what they're doing to blocking the Kiki from learning. So, you know, from, from, so everybody out there, you know, listening, it's like, it's really, really, really uh, appalled in the shame of the of the of the county of Kauai because that's not how we treat our people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and and then, uh, and especially for the kids, and we try to save this last place that has grass in Honolulu after they cement the whole thing is locked out. We trying to take control. This is our place. This is our people. And we rather have them support us than hinder us. And I don't know. They don't got nothing to lose. If they work with us, you know, the people, and they really are for us, you know, they could be the heroes. Well, the number to call, the number to call, if you want to call the mayor, Derek Kawakami, is 241-4900. And I would suggest calling him day and night, calling his office. It works. Keep calling him. Remember back in the day, Kaimi, when I was doing radio, I used to call him up on the phone when it was Bernard. I would call their office. We need to call them out. If you see them in town, turn on your camera and ask them questions and post it. Let's expose the fraud government, what they're doing to our people. In the meantime, continue to kue. And I, I want to thank you so much for, you know, at least we got you your voice on here. I'm looking at your picture and I miss you guys so much. And I want you to know that we on Moku Kiave stand with you 100%. We love you. We love you. And my heart hurts knowing every day what's happening over there. And yet, you know, we are all on the Mauna, yeah, Kaimi? We're all on the Mauna. We're all on one big Mauna that has little pieces of Hawaii sticking up off of it. And so when something happens across the island chain, it hurts us just as badly as if we were right there. And I will never stop fighting for our home. So continue to reach out to me. Let me know how we can help. And let's blow this up. Share the link so that everyone yeah. can know always what's going on Kauai. Send me your videos. Text me, whatever, so that we can keep our islands connected. So I'd like to share a, a, a little incident that happened to me like a couple of days ago that might you know boost our energies. Okay. As I was rummaging through the bushes amongst the forest and the trees and the stones and the rocks and the ancestors, I stumbled upon a very old tiki, a kuka ilimoku. So in the bushes, yes, I found one of these images of our gods, the ku. So it's up in Wainiha, right in front of Ahu right now, standing, holding space. So for all of us, standing the energy across the moku, kiawe, kapaina, hawaii, kue, malamapono, kaku. Love you, kue. Aloha. Aloha. And that is like the perfect way to end that call. He found the ki'i of ku in Wainiha, and he is standing. And ku season started on Sunday. So, hey, ku season is a double-edged sword, so be careful with ku season. You're tuned in to Songs of Sovereignty. Thanks so much for joining us. We've been... um, talking with Brother Kaimi or Konohiki on the island of Kauai. And now we're going to get to Cookie and Keone over here because we got a hot debate going on to vote or not to vote. And Cookie has waxed poetic Shakespearean. So we'll let you go first, girl. Okay, so, um, yeah, I said, so this segment is to vote or not to vote. And I have the most utmost <laughs> expertise on Hawaiian kingdom law Penal and civil codes, because you go from one spectrum to the other, right? So how I want to start this out is I have two paragraphs that I want to read. And this is from, and I got permission this morning to read it. I called her up, and then she was driving, because Wednesday is her crazy busy day. Uh Every day is crazy busy. So I'm going to read what she wrote up. To vote or not to vote? Yeah, to vote (laughs) or not to vote. And this is from. That is the question. Yeah, so I'm going to read this and then I'll tell you who wrote it. 
Okay. So it says, let's let's get this straight. The huli will not happen inside the system. The huli will happen through kue. However, that huli will be a lot more meaningful and probably happen sooner if there are still streams flowing, intact culture, not terrorized out of the existence by rogue doe care officers culturally educated youth and major shifts within the DOE that shifted from endlessly crackling out brainwashed Americanized idiocy on the daily basis. All of those things are largely determined at the fake state legislature, often by one vote. Seriously, if we can get a few really strong aloha aina on the inside and a lot of really strong aloha aina on the outside, we are on our way to freedom and our aina is ikapono. The hardcore kingdom folks who will not vote are respected. Remember that now. Absolutely. Their actions are their vote in the work of keakua. The rest of us who can vote, definitely should. It is simple. In your na'au, well, if your na'au will not allow you to vote, then don't vote. If your na'au allows you to vote, then please vote. And when it is time to huli, let's all huli. This is from Auntie Laulani Teal. Okay. So she wrote that up, and I just wanted to share her perspective. Now, this is her words, not mine, not... Kionis, not Kaiolanis, but we all have our own opinion on this. So for me, as a Hawaiian Kingdom subject, you know what? I'm 50 years old. I'm going to vote, and I know who I'm going to vote for. And if I commit treason against the Hawaiian Kingdom, I'm willing to go. Because you know what? I like that huli happen, and I know we've been patient for 20-plus years and I know that we have those on the international level busing their okoles and doing what they're doing, but we all like do something, right? And, mm -hmm. and I know there's impatience out there, there's young ones who may be disconnected, but that's me, that's my opinion, mm -hmm. that's my take on and it. And that's a big change. That is. That's a big change from for, a few weeks ago. From me. From your standpoint. Yes. And for me, and then we're going to let Keone go last because yeah, he's our he's... kupuna and he's <laughs> our expert on the international law and the laws of occupation. For me, I've mostly voted, even when I lived in Switzerland. I voted from Switzerland. I was one of the cuckoos that was not so cuckoo who voted for Mondale. No. Oh, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> and all my friends in Europe was like, you're crazy, girl. We're voting for Reagan. Yeah. And I got soundly spanked and I had to buy everyone drinks because I voted for Mondale. Wow. But I voted from Zurich for Walter Mondale. Oh. You okay over here? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, and that, the other thing is, my bio donor was an American Marine. So what happens to women in an occupation who get procreated with that have offspring of occupying soldiers. Yeah. Am I afforded those rights as a child of the occupying soldier? In my mind, because I lived in Switzerland and I actually hold Swiss citizenship, I am entitled to American citizenship, even though I'm a Hawaiian kingdom mm -hmm. subject. Yeah. I was born in an army hospital. And so I feel like there's so many of those of us like that. And mm -hmm. I've, I've read the rules of occupation. And as far as what I can see, it's well within my rights to vote as a dual citizen of the Hawaiian Kingdom and the United States. And then some would say, not so fast, because there's no diplomatic relationship going on with the Hawaiian Kingdom and the United States. True that, but there's an occupation going on. And within the rules of occupation, certain things apply. I have an American passport. I have a birth certificate. My father was an American Marine. In fact, he's the guy who painted the Kaneohe Marine Base insignia in Kaneohe. And so here I am, little half American me. Um, my grandparents waved American flags, but hated Howleys. And here we are at a crossroads because politically, we actually 
our position to make a difference. If we vote under duress, number one, and if we use whatever rights are afforded to us by the occupying power, especially those of us that are the hapas, right? Born of American soldiers. I know there's plenty of us plenty, out there. Plenty, plenty, yeah. What does that make me? That puts me in even bigger no man's land because how can I be a Hawaiian kingdom subject when my father was an American Marine? Right. So I say this. Here we live in Hawaii, ne, illegally occupied by the fake state of Hawaii, being squatted upon by the feds and everybody else, everything being stolen. That's not nailed down around here. However, when I come to a red light, I stop in my registered vehicle with my state ID that has a gold star on it because I want to travel. So here I am under duress traveling the highway I come to the red light, I stop. It turns green, I go. And this is from Princess Oana Salazar. She taught me this, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, one guy said, oh, he, he slows down at the red light, and he continues if no one's coming. And I say to you, brah, I hope I'm not on the road while you're driving. I'm a taxi driver, and that's really dangerous. So that's not a good idea. So here we are, obeying the laws of occupation, why would we not vote? That's where I've come to at age 57 today, February 26th, as kind of an old aging beach bunny who's voted mostly in her life but never seen it make a difference. But why wouldn't we? And I'll happily, as a leader of Hawaii, and I consider myself a leader, I will face treasonous charges in order to cast my vote to help save this planet. So that's me. And um, now we'll go to Keone. Your thoughts. <laughs> All right. Yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> I, know. I know. Okay, so first of all, you need to see. Okay, so if you're saying that you're an um, Hawaiian Kingdom subject, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We got laws. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about the instruments of the Hawaiian Kingdom, you're talking about Kampala laws, uh, the Constitution, mm -hmm. penal codes, and also you know, um, case, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And within the compiled laws, it states right there, um, article, I believe it was article three. It says, while living in the Hawaiian kingdom, mm -hmm. all subjects, okay, even um, foreign subjects or citizens of foreign country must obey law with, while within the Hawaiian kingdom, mm -hmm. okay? So that is the base of our, our law. So what, I, what I, I tell people, okay, if you claim to vote in the American system, what law are you standing on? Because this did law, you know, even if, even if we are occupied for 127 years, the laws, our laws did exist. Even if the Americans is not complying to the laws of occupation, mm -hmm. our laws did exist. So when you say like, when you, when you drive to a stop, like just stop, okay, that law is enforced. Because if, if you're not going to um, follow the law, they're going to give you a ticket, right? Mm -hmm. Social security. You need social security to survive, to get one job, all of that stuff, mm -hmm. right? Uh, right now, okay, let's say now you want to travel from here to um, Kauai. Mm -hmm. Now they, they're saying that, okay, on your um, American ID, um, operator's license, you need to have a star. Mm -hmm. That is required, right? Mm -hmm. All of that is required. But when you go into the American political system to vote, you're not being forced. It's voluntary. You Got it. There. Got it. You see, you see the mm. difference, right? I but, do. But, but, Thank the, you. But the bottom line is everybody make your own decision. We're here just to, um, to, to share mm -hmm. um, our, our laws, you know, all, all of that stuff. But ultimately, it, you know, everybody can make their own decision. Mm -hmm. Okay? So... And that, we're not going to hate you for no, it. No, no. I'm not going to unfriend you because you're going to vote. <laughs> is that we're moving. The, the main thing is that we're moving ahead. Doesn't matter how fast you move, how slow you move, but you're moving. Mm -hmm. But we're all moving in the right direction. Like I always say to people, you know what? We cut our own trails mm -hmm. going up the mountain, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you know what? We're all going to meet the final destination on the top. On the top. That's the, that's the main thing. So I'm not saying that, oh, 
because you're going um, if you fall within the category of um, you know treason or war crime that you're going to be prosecuted no I'm not saying that I'm not saying every person will be prosecuted and stuff like that but it's the leaders who actually condoning to tell people to go in one different direction that's all it is mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. right and you know so for me I'm a purist when it comes to international law kingdom law I can I won't stand firm on on the law. Mm -hmm. Everybody is, is different, right? Right. And but that doesn't address dual citizenship. Okay, if you look in Hawaiian Kingdom law, okay, the only dual citizen you gonna get if if your parents were diplomat. Ah. So you're coming from. Well, a, Marines American, are not diplomats. Ever. Yeah. So if so, so 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 let's say if you're coming from an, um, the American Constitution, mm -hmm. there is a dual citizenship. But if you're looking in a um, in the perspective of the Hawaiian Kingdom constitution mm -hmm. that's the only way you can get dual citizenship is if you're a diplomat it's a di oh mm. yeah the child the child is right. a descendant of a diplomat that's what they call them denizen right oh. diplomat is, is dual but us we're not afforded that we are not afforded ah, that. well see there you go again i'm screwed no you're not no, <laughs> no, you're not. no. i mean what good is what no, good no, is it what? being 49 percent and under we're just no, useless but, but the thing is we're sharing um, education we're sharing information but Ultimately, everybody make their own decision. Right, we all and here's what I think, yeah. too. Yes. I think we can stage our own coup d'etat. Mm -hmm. Just think of thousands and thousands of Hawaiians started voting all mm -hmm. across Mokuto Mokuhonu. Yeah. And we all started voting. Yes. All of us. And we just said, okay, we know we're not supposed to do this. Right. But we're staging a coup right now. Right. Because desperate times call for desperate. Right. But see, the intention yeah. is... To meet at the final destination. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, you're going to have um, Hawaiian subjects. We're just going to stay on our path. Okay. Yes. And then you're going to have others who are going to use an alternate path. Right. But we're all going to the same destination. And I guess why we're having this discussion is because of the divisiveness that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. Right. This whole question. Right. Yes is really causing a lot of divisiveness right. and like you're saying it's mm -hmm. a personal choice it's a personal choice no one should hate the other guy no. for the no. choice no. no we all have to make really hard choices right now. right exactly so we all make choices in life study your conscience right and yeah you're not all yeah. you're not all because mm -hmm. like like Kioni said we all headed to the same place yeah uh, restoring Kulia our Hawaii, yeah, restoring our Hawaiian Kingdom government. Mm -hmm. right. That's the ultimate, right, right. there. Mm -hmm. We don't know how long it's going to take us to right. get there, but mm -hmm. we headed there. And yes. however each of us feel that we feel in our na'o, mm -hmm. in our gut, going to take us there. Right. Yeah. That's how we do it. We can all agree that. We're against federal recognition. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. No federal recognition. Yeah, no, recognition. No, no, yeah. I was no, just going to bring up, too, when you're voting, make sure the people you're voting for stand in line with what you're yes. not out What is their for. platform? Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. so, what is their platform? Right. You know, we have guys running for OHA and very much their platform is FedRec. Right. They right. voted for FedRec. Mm -hmm. And I so know you know your, who I'm talking dinner. about. Yes. yes. So do your homework. Do yes. your homework. And in the end... It's it, this thing, if, if we play this in a Hawaiian way, mm -hmm. we can have a lot of fun with this. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Especially if all of us start supporting people that are running, that mm -hmm. we really, like, look at me. I'm going to vote for Bernie Sanders. I never liked the guy. <laughs> but the alternative is what? Yes. Yeah. The devil. Right. The, so right. yeah, literally. And actually, Bernie's not too bad now that I'm seeing him. He's like really, mm -hmm. he's like going for broke and saying, well, how about legal marijuana for all right. 50 states and free health care for everybody? And I'm like, okay, I can vote for that. Right. And like and so, for me, for me, I mm -hmm. haven't voted since Obama, even before that. I want Mike Ruggles to win. Mike I want, Ruggles. I want him to yes. be our mayor. Because I don't want nobody else. I mean, that's why I'm voting. And this mm -hmm. OHA Kukai, I'm not even going to vote for OHA. Because mm -hmm. we all know what OHA is for. Mm -hmm. They have paid for Na'il Puni. Mm -hmm. yes. Participants, mm -hmm. they were supposed it's to run. It's just going to be more of the It's just same. a sham, yes. you guys. Right. Don't even buy into it. When you it. look at the people that are running for OHA, they're yes. the guys that participated in Na'il Puni and right. took the money and voted yes for FedRAC. Right. 
So, and we are not federal. We don't want federal oh, recognition. No. No. We've had John Kane on here and speak in detail about yeah. federal recognition. Yes. And that's uh -huh. a no for me. Right. That's my opinion. So. Yeah. So the, the thing is, if you're going to vote, okay, so if we have um, uh, Hawaiian subjects running in the American um, electric um, system, you need to actually ask them. What is where you platform? stand? Yeah, where do you stand right. on federal recognition, right. on Hawaiian kingdom issues, right. all of those things? Yeah. Yep. Okay, Absolutely. so we have some. Um, I I hope that I'm sorry. I just kind of uh, blurted no. it out because uh -huh. I get sidetracked here. But I hope that we have made it less painful for you in a non-hemorrhoidal type of way <laughs> to vote or not vote. Right. Because in the grand scheme of things, we all have to examine our conscience. Yes. And, you know, I've been known to step outside the line to prove a point before. So um, in that regard, Keone, love you. Love and you uh, Thank you, Keone. You know, that's Thank why we have all each other so we can look at all the sides right. of it. And yes. so, yeah. you know, those of you that are not going to vote, support those that are. Yes. Instead of being mad at them, just no go, fight. oh, you're right. going to jump off the cliff for me right on. Yeah. And then support the people that are running for office that truly are pushing Hawaiian values and most importantly, you know, yes. taking care of the Kanakas first. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to Songs of Sovereignty this morning. We now are going to go to our special guest, and it's, it, I was saving it for a surprise. Yeah. Uh, but Jennifer Ruggles joined us, and so... We're going to go into our interview with Jennifer Ruggles. And we're talking, I, I, you know, there's so many things I could have, like the girlfriend is five different kinds of show she oh could gosh. do. Yeah. But she's also a wealth of information and very well spoken and very educated. And I thought, you know, if I want to know what's happening on this island, let's ask Jen. Yes. Yeah. Let's ask Jennifer Ruggles. Hey, aloha kakahiaka, aloha and good morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us here on our Facebook live stream broadcast of Songs of Sovereignty. And hey, you know, we're always trying to add new things into the show and make it more um, inviting, more reality, more news you don't hear about. And in that spirit, uh, we're adding more content to the show. And this morning, I was fortunate to have had Jennifer Ruggles spend the night with us here last night. And we're having coffee and we're sitting around and talking story. And as you know, I'm a newcomer to the island of Hawaii. So I'm just going, you know, tell me a little bit about what's going on in Puna. Well, from there, it led to me now having her on the show to tell me what's going on with Puna. I mean, I'm over here in Hamakua. It might as well be Kauai for me. It's far away. It's a long drive. However, we have lots of family in Puna, and man, it's a real hot spot. I was blowing my mind on all of the things she was sharing with me. So in that um, spirit, I've invited her to be on the show, and so she's going to talk a little bit about with us today about what's going on on that side of the island in the shadow of the volcano over there in Puna. So let's uh, have a listen to Jen Ruggles right now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. Um, so recently in happening in Puna, last week a man was hit and killed on Highway 130, and police say that neither alcohol or speeding was a factor. And note that in 2013, the Hawaii Star Advertiser in an article said that Highway State 30, State, excuse me, State Highway 130 has the five highest, most dangerous intersections in the entire islands out of all of the roads in Hawaii. Seven years later, the situation has only gotten worse. So last week, after the man had been hit, traffic was gridlocked for four hours. Despite being the district with the highest population and being the fastest growing district in, on the Big Island, Puna still continues to subsidize other districts like Hilo and Kona for its infrastructure improvements while we still con continue to suffer. Meanwhile, we have no alternative route to Hilo. That means in this situation for that four hours, if someone needed to go to the hospital in Puna, they couldn't go. They would have died. Highway 130 with the 
five most dangerous intersections in Hawaii, in a district prone to natural disasters, only has one way in and out. Despite the overwhelming majority support for an alternative route to Hilo, the county has not pursued it because of opposition from wealthy businessman William Shipman, who runs the Great Shipman Estate. This is another classic example of how the county puts the interest of the few and the wealthy over the interest of the many and the public. This would be the fifth fatality on Hawaii 130 since the new year. Moving on, Puna Geothermal agreed to pay $5.5 million to the federal government for fraud. Apparently they defrauded the federal government for $13.8 million in a complaint filed in May in 2014. It said ORMAT engaged in a scheme to obtain federal grant money for geothermal energy product projects which it did not qualify for and have misused and abused the federal funds they have received in order to falsely support geothermal energy projects that the government never attended or would allow. The suit also claimed that ORMAT had sought to artificially, artificially inflate the value of its energy assets in order to, quote, maintain the appearance of viability on its geothermal ventures, creating the appearance of an on-paper profit. So um, this comes to no surprise for us in Pune that no the history of Pune Geothermal and how they've treated the community. Just as a council member, I've heard so many complaints of how they drill at all hours of the night. They spew toxic gas and light pollutions at all hours. Not to mention they create earthquakes within the surrounding communities. When I was a council person during the lava flow, the lava was headed straight towards a geothermal plant. And I had been I had been informed that there was a the 70 tons of pentane on their property and they did not move it out. And this is a highly explosive substance that had the capability of exploding and killing everything within three miles of its plant. Mind you, this plant is in a residential area in Pohiki and Leilani with hundreds, if not thousands of residents living there. I heard that they had stored the pentane on a pu'u at the highest point on the property. However, this pu'u was only a few, um, I think it was only about 50 feet high off the ground. And the lava at the time had been, fluing, had been spewing 200 feet. And so if one piece of lava had hit one of those pieces of, one of those tanks of pentane, Puna would have been devastated. And so as a council person, I, um, my staff had been going to the civil defense debriefings every morning at 7 a.m. And during one of these meetings, we had brought it up because I was putting a lot of pressure on them in the news to remove the pentane. And my staff during one of these meetings reported to me that when they were addressed with this, or when this was brought to their attention, they said that they didn't actually have a plan for the pentane tanks. They didn't know where they would put it, how they were going to remove them, and where, where they were going to store it. And so this was just another classic example of how PGV treats the community. They have very little regard for our Pune community. Wow, that's just um, a couple of the things going on in Pune right now, and we've got more news for you. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and l watch this little video about Mike Ruggles, Jen's dad, who is running for mayor of the island of Hawaii. And we actually outscooped all of the news media um, by breaking that news back in January here on Songs of Sovereignty. Then we're going to be right back to talk more about what's happening in Puna on the island of Hawaii. So stay with us, share the link, start your watch parties. We'll be right back. We're going to run for mayor. And well, so, wait, 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 yeah. wait, slow down, say that again. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to run for mayor. and uh, You're running for mayor. Today I am... Uh, uh, signing up to run for mayor. I got my uh, signatures. I had them approved yesterday. I just had all this stuff uh, notarized. So I'm going to go in, and I believe it's 50 bucks. 
And then after that, we can accept cam campaign donations. I'm setting up a Facebook. So if anybody wants to help, obviously, uh, I don't have deep pockets, and I'm going to need a lot of help to keep the Big Island from becoming a police state. How much was it, 50 bucks? 50 bucks. We started uh, as Friends for Justice, and uh, we're still using that as our campaign name for donations. But uh, we started as a medical cannabis club, and later we became a metal, medical cannabis collective. And so um, we opened up in 2015, I ended up getting arrested, and we ended up going to trial in 2019, and I was found not guilty. Um, we didn't actually able to fix it for everyone. We were hoping that it would not just me be found guilty, but we could actually make it so patient to patient transfer. There's over 30,000 medical cannabis patients with the majority of them on the Big Island. And so I'm still fighting for them. And um, I'm also fighting for the lowest law enforcement priority. What happened was uh, Mitch Roth, I want to say 20 years ago, brought in administrative forfeiture. And between administrative forfeiture and matching funds, uh, it turned law enforcement against the people and became law enforcement for profit. And so what we want to do is get rid of law enforcement for profit, which is administrative forfeiture and matching funds. The lowest law enforcement priority did pass in 2008, and they should have followed it. Um, Recently, legislative, state legislation passed unanimously to stop administrative forfeiture. Because you guys got to remember, administrative forfeiture is they take stuff before you're even found guilty. And they did an audit of it in 2018, and the uh, Big Island has the worst abuse. They, uh, they got Mitch Roth to comment on that, and he said, um, hey, the governor was right to veto the administrative forfeiture bill because he's never heard of it being uh, abused. And it's funny that he would say that because he's the guy that does it. He's the guy that actually takes people's property. He's the guy, and here's an interesting example, was they just had a guy, I'm not going to say any names, but a plumber, and he just bought a new truck, the father, for the, uh, for the plumbing business. Now, uh, one of the workers got pulled over and had a meth pipe and they confiscated the truck, the work truck. This is administrative forfeiture, and it goes against the cornerstone of the judicial system, which is you're innocent to proven guilty. It goes against the Constitution, which is due process and safe and secure in your possessions. And so uh, a group of people wanted me to come up to give the people of the Big Island a better choice than the prosecutor, the current prosecutor, who's running for mayor right now. And I'd also like to point out that he should have resigned. See, I'm filing right now, and in there they got a piece of paper that if you're filing and you're running for mayor and you hold a county position, you're supposed to resign. He didn't do so, and he's going to wait until the cutoff date in June. Now, I'm not saying he's breaking any campaign laws, but I believe it's unethical. We'll let the people decide that. But between administrative forfeiture and matching funds, they've been attacking cannabis users. We don't need to. Hawaii grows the best cannabis in the world and the best hemp in the world. Hemp is now legal across America. There's no reason why we can't be a, a very uh, productive and prosperous island if we take care of this and we stop uh, coddling law enforcement and enforcing laws for profit. So that's the real reason I came out. I by no means wanted to be mayor. A group of friends came to me, and I'm trying to give the Big Island a better choice. And I want to bring up a few other points, which is if I'm made mayor, HCCC, I plan on bulldozing that and making it a dog park. What they want to do is turn it into a seven-story high-rise jail right in the heart of town. 75 years ago, that might have been a good idea, but it's not now. It's right next to the hospital. It's right next to the best homes in town. We don't need a seven-story prison right in the heart of town. My idea is a community farm outside of town, and I want to have the prisoners actually working on the farm, ranching, growing their own food, vegetables, and enough to actually make money. And we're going to pay them so that when people get out of jail, they got money in their pocket. That's like the opposite of administrative forfeiture. And there's another one problem going on right now that I think we need to bring up. And a couple whistleblowers who wouldn't bring up their name, is where they brought it up in the paper, which is uh, we have two sets of rules now. Apparently, county workers, if they get in trouble, we don't get to hear about it till eight, nine months later, like in the Leloy case. When they interviewed Mitch Roth on that, he said, well, maybe we, we don't know. Maybe the system is working. 
No, let me, you know, here's a little reality check. When we don't know, that means the system isn't working. That means they were covering up. They covered up the Leloy instance, and they only do that on the Big Island. And here's the thing, we should have sunshine on the Big Island. I understand we're the rainiest part of Hawaii, but we need sunshine, and we need sunshine in the government. And you'll notice in the Kealoha case and Oahu, we heard about it right away. They didn't wait. See, Leloy, he actually assaulted that other county employee in July. It would have been nice to know from my trial because when I brought up, hey, when he came up to my house and threatened to beat me up, he totally said he didn't do that. Obviously, he did do that. And so my point is this, is they got this completely backwards. They got the, uh, the cart before the horse. If anything, it's the people who should have more rights, not the county employees. County employees should be held to a higher standard than citizens. If anybody, when there's a problem and an arrest, if anybody should not be have their name blasted in the paper, it's the citizens, not the county employees. So they got that completely backwards. We're gonna fix that as well. So there's a lot of things I want to fix. I love my community farm idea. It's not a new one, and it's one that's being used across the country. Uh, locking up non-victim criminals is stupid, and it's expensive. It costs 10 times as much, and everybody knows this. Non-victim criminals and homeless people, they need help. It's a mental health issue. When you take mental health issue people and put them five to a two-man cell, like we're currently doing here, it doesn't help anybody. And taking uh, non-victim criminals' possessions on administrative forfeiture is not making the county safer. It's making them more desperate, which means more dangerous, and they're more apt to go out and do something desperate. Let's stop that, and that's why I'm running for mayor. Welcome back to the show, uh, your Facebook live stream broadcast of Songs of Sovereignty. Good morning to you. Hope you're having a great morning. And thanks for joining us. Be sure and start a watch party. And we've been talking story sort of kind of with Jennifer Ruggles. She's a resident here on the island of Hawaii, lives in Puna, a former county councilwoman. And I'm just finding out a lot of things are happening on this island, like it's a big island and there's a lot going on. So we're having this discussion. If you missed the earlier portion, you're going to want to go back later and watch it because it's kind of eye opening. Anyway, we're going to continue on the discussion with Jen. And now we're getting to um, a little more meat of the matter, specifically all of the rape and murder that happens around not even all of it, just some very recent stuff that's been going on here on the island of Hawaii. And you've heard me talk about what's happening on the island of Kauai. And so we're going to be starting to really get into watching our judiciary system. I don't know how to I don't know how to explain it, but it just seems like there's a lot of really bad shit going on. What do you think, Jen? Yes, tell tell me is. some more about what's happening. Yes. Um, and I would hate I mean, the, the facts and the truth are not completely in on these stories. Mm -hmm. And so I would hate to frame it in a way that dishonors the people in the story. So let's just keep that in mind, that we're just sticking to the facts here. Right. And we're not trying to infer anything. Right, right. Um, so moving on, I'm sure many of you have heard the story of Megan May Funderburk. Funderburk, excuse me. Uh, she's 24 years old. She's been on Hawaii for about five years, and I personally knew her. Um, her body was recently found six days after she was reported missing. Megan's boyfriend, Michael Brown, was the last person to see her alive. Brown admitted that, his, that he had plans to purchase heroin on the day that Megan went missing. But when, on that day, when she had learned that they were on their way to do a deal, a drug deal, she demanded that Michael Brown let her out of the vehicle. And that was the last time that she was seen. Her boyfriend left the island the following day to go to rehab in California. And he reported that he did not know where she was. In the days after she went missing, her phone, one shoe, and a scarf were found scattered around the area that she was last seen. Six days later, a short way down a fisherman's trail, 30 feet over the edge of a cliffside, 
her body was found. The Hawaii Police Department is continuing their investigation, but they are but they report that, quote, no foul play was suspected in Megan's death. And now that we're talking about the Hawaii Police Department, there was another big story that just came out about retired, now retired officer, detective Ian Leloy. He has recently been charged with assaulting a county official while he was still a police officer. According to the reports, he rolled up to the Gila Lagoon Center where he saw Deputy Director of Public Works, Neil Tanaka, and he approached him and hit him on the right side of his head and busted his eardrum. He then said that there's so much more I want to do to you, to Neil. This is a Class C felony that carries a possible five-year prison sentence upon conviction. Furthermore, uh, Officer Mahuna reported that Officer, excuse me, that his wife, Sue Leloy, who is a council person for Hilo, said, told him that her husband had saw text messages that appear to show a relationship between herself and the Deputy Director Neil Tanaka. Councilwoman uh, Sue Leloy is, like I said, is a lawmaker and she is running for re-election. Hawaii County Prosecutor Mitch Roth conflicted out of prosecuting the case, and now there are prosecutors from Kauai and Oahu prosecuting the case. What are their names? Justin Collar. Justin Collar is the, prosecutor. Is the current Kauai prosecutor. And what's interesting about this case is that Jeff Portnoy, who is a Honolulu attorney who represents the Tribune Herald and other various media outlets, said that Officer Leloy's sealing of the court case documents are the way that things are done in third world countries where friends of important people manage to get embarrassing documents kept from the public. Portnoy said that it's almost unheard of for a booking document to be sealed. So what, what he's saying right now is that all of the details of this case in court are being hidden from the public. He says it's, it's almost unheard of for a booking document to be sealed and that an arrest is, by very nature, a matter of public record. Always, unless it's a matter of national security or maybe like you arrested a member of the Taliban or something. The standard for sealing is extraordinarily difficult. There has to be some sort of overwhelming privacy interests and it appears what we have here is nothing more than political connections." Unquote. He then goes on to say, this is the kind of illegal, unconstitutional, preferential treatment that cannot be tolerated. Now, what's interesting is that this is the same officer that has targeted my father over and over again. He is the one that initiated the recent case against my father where he was facing three life sentences for Medical Cannabis Collective. Um, he charged him with 30 felonies and dropped all but one of them the day before trial because he didn't have the evidence. One time when I was younger, Officer Leloy had come up our driveway and when my father requested that he give us a search warrant, Officer Leloy responded, if you make me get a warrant, I'm going to come back here, I'm going to kick your ass and I'm going to take all your stuff. And so he then proceeded to search our house. He went around our property and he looked at my dad's medical cannabis plants and then determined that he was one plant over compliance, which he wasn't. He took all of our plants, he ripped them up, he put them in his truck and he drove away. He wouldn't give us a receipt. And this happened multiple times. We filed a complaint with the police commission and the police commission did an investigation and they made a policy change that they had recommended to the chief. However, almost monthly we received visits from various police departments and Green Harvest. We had a helicopter land in our backyard once. We had it on film where the officer said, Officer Leloy sent us. And that's, that was what the story was multiple times with police officers coming to do these things called compliance checks which they believe are allowed for medical cannabis patients. These compliance checks are basically where they come up your driveway unannounced and they search your house, they search your plants, and they don't have a warrant. Later, 
one of our friends who had had one of these compliance checks on the same day in our neighborhood that we had one filed a lawsuit and it was determined to be unconstitutional which is obvious you're supposed to have a warrant it's our basic right no searches and seizures without a search warrant so that's what's happening on the big island and that's just a few of our favorite things <laughs> right so as time goes on we're thinking that maybe we could do a little bit more consistent reports of what's happening in Pune and other stories of interest. Well, what's really interesting about all of it, because to me, I was talking, talking to you about an anthill, right? There's just a little hole at the top, but then when you go down, you see all the tunnels and how intricate mm -hmm. it is. So why am I interested in this Leloy case? Well, um, in November, I was charged with terroristic threatening of my Tongan brother-in-law, who is almost seven feet tall, and it came from a dispute over our property that's been like 20 years going on. I just married into the family. And so what happened with me is just one incident in a string of things that has happened with my husband's family regarding the property. So this Tongan brother-in-law of mine works for the prison system. And um, evidently, I, he's been terrorized by me. I've been charged with terroristic threatening as a felony, and I paid a $5,000 bail. Now, what's interesting about that is, you'll know, um, Kauai people know I've been arrested numerous times, but nothing's ever stuck. And even the one conviction that I have, apparently it went away because it's nowhere to be found. So now it gives an appearance of a bias by Kauai County. Justin Collar's coming after me for a $5,000 bail for allegedly threatening my brother-in-law from my porch. No contact made. I'm a tiny chick compared to this guy. Mm -hmm. He's a prison guard, potential, potentially armed. I believe he's armed all the time. And I got put in the back of a cop car for two hours, handcuffed so bad, so tight that my wrists were, you know, really roughed up and beaten up by the cops, um, forced to urinate on the floor of the cell because mm -hmm. they wouldn't let me use the bathroom after holding me in a police car for two hours for this guy who says he's being terrorized by me. And yet, this police officer can walk up to someone and burst his eardrum, assault him, and he gets a $1,000 bail. Right. His bail was $1,000. So he actually had physical contact. He's an uh, officer of the law, mm -hmm. and he was in his capacity working. So you have Justin Collar now setting bail for this guy, who is an LEO, at $1,000, and setting my bail at $5,000. And this is going on in all of our counties. The day I went to court to face these terroristic threatening charges, there were four other women facing these charges. And what happens is violence occurs within families. The police arrest the woman. They didn't arrest the guy that I was going off on. They didn't even ask me why I was screaming at him to stay the F away from me. They didn't even ask that question. So what's happening is all the women get arrested. We become customers of the court. I've not even had a real conversation with my public defender. Mm -hmm. The only words he said to me was, don't speak. And how do you formulate your defense? Um, I had Justin Collar attempting to serve me my indictment via Twitter. He requested over and over my email address on Twitter to serve me my indictment. Why? Because he needs my consent to serve me an indictment via email. Because they, they forgot to serve me my indictment. So this stuff's all going on with me and why I'm so interested in this Officer Leloy thing is, well, they've changed his venue oh, to mind Kauai. You, mind you, I think an important thing to bring up here is that Officer Leloy has a history of temporary restraining orders being filed against him from his wife, Officer Sue Leloy. Wow. And statistically, 40% of all police officers physically abuse their wives. Wow. Now, I'm not saying that that's what's going on here, 
but statistically after my um experience with Kauai Police Department, my numerous experiences with them, I don't have high hope that they treat their own women well, let mm -hmm. alone the public. Right. And even the females that work within the police department, I don't have high hope that they treat other peop people within the community well. It's really, um, they're very violent, mm -hmm. very violent. The female officer dug her hands into my arms so hard. Mind you, they put shackles on me. Where am I gonna run? Mm -hmm. She ripped my arm open, you know. So the brutality that I experienced by the Kauai, Poli Poli Kauai Police Department, you can see this is really upsetting to me. Everyone's been wondering, and mm -hmm. this is a good time to bring it out. Um, two weeks later, a woman was arrested by Kauai Police Department and thrown in the same cell I was in and she had a history of mental illness. I have a history of mental illness. I'm not ashamed to say I'm under a doctor's care and I take medication. I've been diagnosed with severe PTSD, among other things, depression, from all of the brutality we women face and more. Mm -hmm. This woman had the same thing going on. In fact, she had the same counselor as I do. And she killed herself in the cell with a roommate in there while being videotaped by her suicide watch police officers. She was on a suicide watch in the same cell that I was in, ate her Mylar blanket, fell, to, fell off the top bunk, died there. And so what is going on in Hawaii? Well, it all comes back from that coconut bra and the huge amount of human trafficking that is historically, because like Kalani was saying this morning, this shit's been going on for a long time. And they throw the book at the women all the time. Let's look at Lori Valor, Valor. Okay, $5 million bail? Five million? Wow, she's a big customer of the mm -hmm. court. I'm nothing, I'm only five grand, but five seems to be Justin Collar's favorite number. So it's just the whole inequity of everything. And then you got the prosecutor trying to serve me via Twitter, mm -hmm. right? I have my public defender looking at me, telling me not to speak. I haven't had a conversation with my public defender. I was arrested in November. So what's going on is, you become a customer of the court, and especially if you're a woman, you are not protected. Mm -hmm. And so I just trip out that this officer, Leloy, or Detective Leloy, got a $1,000 bail. And mind you, he retired the following day. And so he got all his retirement now benefits. Now he gets all his everything. retirement benefits. Wow. Well, it's evident that um, Hawaii, this, the fake state of Hawaii. And now do you believe me when I say we're not really a state? Because aren't we just being shown every single day in every which way that we're being bent over and totally used and abused and it, it, there is no color of law here. There is no color of law. When you have the type of stuff that's going on like the ant hill, like I'm telling you, there's no real law happening. Mm -hmm. There's lawlessness happening, and then there's occupation happening. But, you know, when I heard your dad's story, I just freaked out and blew my mind. And my dad is the only one that actually took it to trial. Mm -hmm. My dad's one of a hundred stories of mm -hmm. the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of, the reason he started the collective was because in 2007, 2006, there was this rogue police officer, Officer John Weber, mm -hmm. that got over 300 marijuana busts, all of them medical cannabis patients. All of them medical cannabis patients. And so when my dad got arrested for growing a medical cannabis and he was in compliance at the time, this officer reported that he wasn't because it's your word against theirs and mm -hmm. they have full control over the evidence. And mm -hmm. even though that evidence had showed that he had falsified his reports, they, the judge still wouldn't allow us to bring it up in court. You know, it's the, the whole system is ruled against you. But mm -hmm. anyway, so my father had put an ad in the paper and it said, got medical cannabis, but been busted anyway, united we stand. And that's how we started Friends for Justice. 
And we had stories after stories after stories of these police coming in and really going out of their way to break their own policies and procedures to try and get a conviction. Mm -hmm. They throw the book at you and then they intimidate you into taking a deal. So they have a 100% kill rate mm -hmm. on cannabis cases in Hawaii. My dad's case was the first case to ever go to trial and they were even scaring him. They threatened our best witnesses. Our best witnesses didn't get to testify because the prosecutor said that he would federally charge them and indict them. And this is the man your dad is running against for um, the no. office of mayor. This is a different prosecutor. Yeah, this is a different prosecutor. Okay. Well, That was uh, Rick Damerville, who is the one prosecuting the Kapuna. And there's another example of the lawlessness eight at a time they're in groups of eight for their for their court hearings mm -hmm. this has never been seen before and there's no allowance in law for it mm -hmm. so there is no color of law going on and i think now that what we need to do is have all the women come forward there are currently 448 cases in appellate court of women that have been charged with terroristic threatening because they were in domestic violence or stalker situations or some kind of form of abuse. And 448 right now in appellate court cases of women that have been found guilty of terroristic threatening. And um, that's a high number of women going off and terroristically right. threatening people. So doesn't law enforcement think, well, hey, there's a lot of chicks that seem to be going off and screaming at men right now. Why? No. You know, we have this 448 appeals going on. Mm -hmm. And when I made my motion to dismiss my case, it was like, no. I asked for a change of venue. Nope, motion denied. How come Leloy gets a change of venue, Justin Collar, and I don't? Well, stay tuned, everyone. We're going to be following this and many more closely. And if you're a woman that has been abused by the system, you've been in a domestic violence situation, or you've had your house raided, you, you're a medical patient, we want to hear your stories because it's about time that we start really paying attention to the judicial system here and all the shit they're getting away with. Because there are laws, right? What's up with their laws? Yeah, what's interesting, we talk about lawlessness. Mm -hmm. This is a very lawless state. I mean, mm -hmm. when we think about what I had done on the council and I just asked what is what gives us legal jurisdiction here, mm -hmm. they ignored it. They yeah. couldn't tell me what actually gives us our county council jurisdiction over the big island mm -hmm. as an agency of the united states they couldn't answer your question within the hawaiian kingdom yeah yeah i think if you're doing a job and your boss can't tell you who what where way why it's who, a very valid question yeah. <laughs> why how you know all these things it's mm -hmm. a very valid question so uh stay tuned to songs of sovereignty we will have more and Coming up, you're going to be having your own show and having some, uh, making some movies, and we can't wait to see what you're going to be producing because you're really a, um, you're a powerhouse, Thanks. Missy. Likewise. Thanks for being on the show mm -hmm. with this horrible topics, these horrible topics about our beautiful communities that we live in, our beautiful islands that we live in, and like I was saying this morning, it's like it's like. The devil's in charge here. Really like the devil's in charge. Thanks for joining mm -hmm. us, Jen. Thank you. All right, you guys, we'll be back in a few minutes. Please start your watch parties. Thanks for making us go viral once again. Stay tuned. Aloha. Mahalo for joining us. We'll see you again next Wednesday. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Aloha. <laughs>